2000 through 2007 Toyota Sequoia brake master cylinder replacement. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing that. So I'm going to get started by unplugging the level sensor here. And then there's going to be two pressure switches. So you're going to squeeze the tab, pull them off here and here. So next I'm going to take off the cap here and suck out as much of the old brake fluid as I possibly can. A turkey baster works great for removing the old brake fluid. Next you're going to remove the two brake lines. I'm going to use a 12 millimeter line wrench. These wrenches are kind of special so they don't round out the, uh, the lines. They're very soft and they round out easily so I recommend you use these. So go ahead and crack those both free and spin the two lines out. Once you have the lines unbolted, you can just kind of flex them out of your way. You try not to bend them up too much. You want them to go right back on. So if you bend them, they, they're hard to start sometimes. So after you get that done, you can remove the two 13 millimeter nuts holding the massive cylinder to the brake booster. I'm going to use a, a extension here with a 13 millimeter socket and my Milwaukee M12 uh, 3H drive ratchet here. Having tools like this Milwaukee ratchet here it really makes life easy. I'll put a link for it in the description of the video. I recommend that you check it out. Now that you have it unbolted, you're just going to pull the little wiring harness tab out of your way, flex the lines out of your way, and then you're just going to pull the master cylinder straight out and work it out of the, uh, out of the car. So we're going to transfer over the pressure sensors, and we're going to take it off one at a time and transfer it over into the new master cylinder. I recommend that you pick these up. In this case of this vehicle, the customer elected not to, to purchase them, so I'm going to transfer the old ones over. But I will leave a link in the description of the video for the sens sensors and also for the master cylinder. So we're going to use a wrench, unbolt it, and then uh, install it into the new master cylinder. And you want to just tighten it till they're snug. You don't want to. You don't have to make them too tight. Just snug. So now we're going to turn our focus to the brake booster here. If your master cylinder was leaking really bad and filled the inside of the brake booster up with brake fluid, it may require may be required to replace the brake booster. I've seen it damage them. But if yours was just a minor leak, like in our case the pedal was just going to the floor, you can uh, just clean it up and uh, transfer the new part onto here. So to clean it up, I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper and sand the, the mating surface uh, smooth. That way we get a nice good seal and we won't have any vacuum leaks. So now we need to bench bleed our master cylinder. So I got it mounted into the vise here. You're gonna fill it up with brake fluid. Then you're gonna take a, a Phillips screwdriver and put it in the end of the master cylinder. And you're gonna press the screwdriver in, press, the, press it in. And then you put your fingers over the ports right here. And as you press in, you release the pressure. And then as you release the screwdriver back out, you put your fingers over the holes and block the holes off. So you'll repeat this. So you'll push the screwdriver in and you'll remove your fingers and you'll repeat this pattern until you have good flow coming out of both of the ports and then the most master cylinders come with little caps so I like to put the little caps back in the in the in the ports that way when you're working with it it doesn't drain out all the uh, new brake fluid so now we're going to install it back into the brake booster so you'll just line up the, the little push rod there with the master cylinder slide it on and then slide the little wiring harness back into place and then start your two 13 millimeter uh, nuts and tighten those up until they're snug. Now you can go ahead and screw in the uh, brake lines back into the master cylinder. And you want to uh, be careful not to cross through them. They're very easy to do that. So you'll screw them in until they're snug. After you get the two lines started, you want to just snug them up. Uh, you know, not too tight. Just make sure they're good and snug where they're not leaking any fluid. Then you can go ahead and plug in the sensors the two pressure sensors and the level sensor. Now I'm gonna bleed the master cylinder. So I'm gonna have somebody get in the vehicle and pump the pedal for me and I'm gonna open up the bleed, the lines right here at the master cylinder, crack them open and bleed the, uh, the air out. This is the high point in the system. So we'll bleed it out right here. I also piled a bunch of rags underneath the master cylinder to catch the fluid as we bleed this. Okay, go ahead and pump the pedal. Hold it. Okay, go ahead and pump it. Hold. Okay, go ahead and pump it up again. Okay, 
pump it up again. There, hold it. There we go. Down. Okay, pump it up. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and pump it up. Okay, hold it down. So once you got steady flow of brake fluid coming out of both lines, then you'll tighten the two lines up. Then you can use a little bit of brake clean and, and spray off the uh, excess brake fluid that may have, that's spilled everywhere. And then I also, what I like to do is use just plain old water and kind of wash the area down. I also have a bucket underneath catching any of the drain off. So I'll, I'll rinse off all the old brake fluid with, some, with about a gallon of water. So that's how I bleed the massive cylinder on this Toyota Sequoia. If your brake pedal still feels soft and spongy, then I would recommend you start at the right rear wheel and pump the pedal and bleed, open the bleeder screw and then move to the left rear wheel and then move to the right front and then back to the left front. But usually doing it this way, you won't have any problems. So you're most likely going to have a ABS light or VSV light on. And you're going to need a little scan tool to clear that out. It's going to be for a master cylinder pressure sensor. So you're going to need to go into the manufacturer specific side of the scan tool to do this, to clear this out. You're not going to be able to do this with a little code reader. So if you don't have one, I recommend you take it down to a repair shop. Just have them clear the codes out for you. You'll just follow the prompts on the screen of your scanner, whatever type of scanner you're using. And that'll complete the job of replacing the brake master cylinder on a 2000 through 2007 Toyota Sequoia. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the HowToAutomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And also to remind you, I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick any of that up, you can find that there. Thank you again for watching.